Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Welcome to this week's edition of Takedown TV. Our coverage this week starts in Athens, Greece. That's where the United States finished three for three to close out the Cadet World Championships. Defending world champ Kurt McHenry left Athens with his second straight title at 46 kilos. In the gold medal round, McHenry met up with Georgian world champ Gagalishvili and ran out to an eight-point lead on a series of throws. The Georgian pulled within four on a late takedown and a trapped arm gut wrench, but McHenry answered back with a four-point throw at the buzzer and won his second world gold 12 to 4. Voyage to win in a second one. How did it compare to win in the first go round? Tougher. Uh, I need more skill, I need more grit, I need more toughness, I need to be harder, meaner. Just tougher, grind, harder grind. What are your thoughts now that you've completed it? Um, I mean, I'm really happy. Second, third, to ever win two world championships behind Yanni and Gable, some of my best friends. It's a great feeling especially when I get to correlate myself with two of my best friends. So. In their first international competition, both Aaron Brooks and Daniel Kirklet took home world titles at 76 and 100 kilos. Brooks was dominant in the opening period, hitting a four-point throw, a pair of takedowns and exposure going up 12-3 against the cadet European champion Kostikev. The Russian responded with back-to-back -back takedowns to pull within five, but Brooks went on the defense and held on for a 12-7 victory. Now let's go to the heavyweight finale. It was Kirk Fliet against the cadet European champion Nirov. Kirk Fliet scored first on passivity, but a late first period push-out tied the score at one. The American continued to press the action in the second, drawing another passivity call to win the gold 2-1. Track wrestling in Athens, Greece with cadet world champion Daniel Kirk Fliet. 2-1 uh, winner in the finals. Uh, your thoughts on the match? Came off firing early, but yeah. uh, what, what was the game plan going in? The plan was to get to my offense and get to it early. I mean, it didn't happen, but I did what I had to do to win. It's kind of a crazy story to go from being a cadet, a cadet World Team Trials runner up to a Cadet World Champion in a couple months. Yeah. How have you progressed since then? Could you have won this tournament, you think, at uh, that point? No. I don't even know. I probably would have made it past the first round barely. You know, like a 1 0 match, 2 0 match, and then I would have. I wouldn't have did much further. You know, I just wasn't wrestling like I was capable of wrestling, so definitely a big jump. 17-year-old Chicago native Will Lewin picked up wins over India, Russia, and Turkey to reach the gold medal round. That's where he faced Ibrahimov of Azerbaijan. Lewin scored the first points on a step out, but his opponent drew a passivity point with just a minute left and took the lead on criteria. Now we go inside five seconds. Lewin worked his way to an underhook and took the bout at the buzzer 3-1. Final minute, you're you're down on criteria. You, you know you got to make something happen. What's running through your mind at that point? Can you walk walk us through what what took place in the last 15, 20 seconds? So, well, I knew I had to stay calm. That if I kept pushing, I kept attacking, something was going to come up. I was going to get him out of position where I could score. And I just needed to stay calm and keep hitting stuff that I know, hitting, staying where I'm good, hitting uh, solid techniques, and uh, eventually gave through and I was able to take him down in the last five seconds, so yeah, to stay calm. Capturing a bronze medal for Team USA, Jakari Teamer ran out to an eight-point lead and then pinned his South African opponent in the very first period. Joining Teamer on the podium, Gavin Hoffman, he met up with India's Sandeep Mann in the third-place bout and fell behind early on criteria. The Pennsylvania native picked up his offense in the second, scoring on a step out, a takedown, and a last-second exposure winning the match and the medal 7-2. Yesterday, I just wasn't feeling myself. I wasn't wrestling myself. And uh, today, I pretty much just had to get back to my ways. I had uh, just uh, get, yesterday, I, went, I, I would say I was in the right mindset. I was, uh, I don't know, I was uh, not looking to fight. I was just looking for these, uh, just like, Teching these kids, but it made me realize that I have to go out there and fight every match. And today I came out with that mentality, and uh, I fought every second of every match, and it paid off for me. And I came through with the bronze. What, what's the greatest lesson you learned in this tournament, Jacory? Um, leave it out there. Be like, be offensive, and they can't really, can't really keep up with the pace of my offense, and I just have to. Next time I'll be here again. I know I'll be here again, and I'll just leave it out there. With four gold medals and a pair of bronze, the U.S. finished seven points back of Russia in the freestyle team race, followed by Azerbaijan and Iran. We talked with head coach Kevin Jackson. 
Russia might have got us in the, in the team race, but we're def we definitely have some Russian, uh, some Russian beaters. Um, these guys are um, competitors. I thought they wrestled the last couple of days. I thought uh, America really showed up. I thought these guys really showed their heart. Um, great final session. Ja'Cory, um, uh, uh, McHenry. Uh, what can you say about Aaron Brooks coming home with the title and, and, uh, and the big guy finishing off, great finishing off. So um, real excited for these guys, real excited for their future, and, um, and we'll keep this thing rolling. Our coverage of the Cadet World Championships continues after the break. Stick around. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey General Stores. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet in Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting, and you should too. All right, welcome back to the show. Our coverage of the Cadet World Championships continues in the Greco-Roman division. That's where Colton Schultz became the first American to win gold since 1997. Following a one-point decision of the semis, Schultz squared off against Belint Vadzi of Hungary in the 100 kilo finals and scored the first points of the bout on passivity. Now late in the second, Vatsi took the criteria lead on a step out, but Schultz pushed forward and snapped down the Hungarian for a go-behind takedown to seal the 3-1 victory. You're the first cadet world champ, Greco world champ for the U.S. since 1998, or 1997, actually. What does something like that mean to you? It's awesome. It's, it shows we're, we're coming, we're growing. It's just going to keep growing, getting better from here. What is this, uh, you, you know, the summer, junior world championships? You stay over for the, you know, you go to Sweden, you go to Paris. Uh, you know, Matt was kind of alluding that maybe you're getting a little homesick there. What has what this summer been like? It's been rough. It's, it was hard. It was a lot of sacrificing a lot. So have, having an end like this just feels great. It feels nice. It's, I put a lot into this. I gave up a whole lot for this. It ended up, it ended up coming out right for me. Though Schultz was the only American to medal, the U.S. more than doubled its 2016 win total, picking up 11 victories and a 10th place finish in Athens. Here's national coach Matt Linden on his gold medalist and the growth of USA Greco. This isn't just about Colton, the way he looks at it. He does this for you know his teammates, his family, his coaches, and I, I think that's a really, you know, thing that shows that how much he's matured over this summer and just the, his perspective on the sport and life. Uh, the, the tournament as a whole. I mean, you guys uh, almost quadrupled the number of matches you won a year ago. What's what's your take on the start to finish, the performance here for the, for the entire squad? Well, I, I, I think what, what that was, was winning more matches, was having more time with our cadets this summer. And it still isn't enough time. They're, they're still... They're still not with us full time. You know, they're they're doing folk style still. Um, but we did get a lot of opportunity to spend time with our, our cadets. And you know, the the problem is when they get into those uh, those pressure situations. The pressure really comes down. They go to some bad habits. Um, they go to what makes them feel comfortable and, and what they've done. You know, they'll go to collar ties. Their hips will be back. Their head will be down. And they're they're doing such great stuff. I'm watching their position, and all of a sudden pressure gets on, and they revert back to some of those those old folk style habits. And that's just you know, that's just a product of our, our culture and our system in the United States, and we're working to change that. 
Led by silver medalist Alara Boyd and Emily Shilson, the United States finished fifth in the women's freestyle division. We go to 65 kilos. Boyd battled Hinoka Nakai of Japan and drew a first period passivity to go up by one. Though Nakai was unable to score any technical points, she forced a second period passivity call and took the 1-1 win on criteria. Meanwhile, Shilson fell to Japan's Umi Ito in the final round at 43. Ito hit a double leg off the opening whistle and went right into a leg lay, securing three turns and a tech ball just 17 seconds into the bout. I need to work on being ready right off the whistle. She caught me on my heels and I felt like I was mentally ready, but physically I just wasn't ready right when she was. She'd so been here twice. Last year came away with bronze, this year it's a silver. Um, kind of making those strides, what does it mean to you to improve on that finish from last year? Um, it means a lot, like I'm definitely not where I want to be, but I guess knowing that like I keep improving every year, so next year like I know like I can definitely like if I just keep going up one, one then I'll eventually get to the top. Kalani Corbett and Caitlin Walker both reached the bronze medal round but were unable to capitalize. Walker was pinned by India Simran at the three minute mark while Corbett dropped a 2-1 decision to her Hungarian opponent Nagy. In the team race, no surprise there. Japan ran away with the team title followed by India, Russia, Ukraine and the United States. Head coach Emma Randall talked to us about the finish. My overall thoughts are we've got a long way to go. Um, I think Technically, we know a lot of positions, but can we put multiple positions together and flow through them? Can we keep our hips underneath of us and maintain discipline within our head and our hands um, and our hips and our feet while we're wrestling through those positions, you know, instead of getting sloppy and losing, um, you know, just getting, just getting caught with deep arms and front headlocks, getting snapped down uh, a little bit too easily not being able to score in front headlocks, uh, not feeling those tilts as they're starting to come in, um, just standing up out of our stance and giving opponents a free attack at our legs. I think just putting together solid wrestling is where we need to start working. Hey, we got to take a quick time out. Back after this, you're watching Takedown. Thanks to the Bent Soul. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com.
All right, welcome back. In honor of the annual Cyhawk Series here in Iowa, we invited the athletes and coaches of Iowa and Iowa State to join us for a special edition of Takedown Radio just last Saturday. Representing the Hawkeyes, heavyweight Sam Stoll, along with All-American Brandon Sorensen, and longtime head coach Tom Brands. We're going later uh, in this season for this uh, rivalry between you and Iowa State. Is that something that uh, had to been had to be changed because of Big Ten scheduling, or is this something a new tradition that you and Dresser are going to try to establish with this duel later in the season? Well, we gave them the date because they couldn't come in because there was a conflict in the original date with the uh, uh, Vegas tournament. Um, and then next year it's in our arena and we'll, we'll have the date set. So we may go back to before Christmas. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. So coach, uh, the you know, the schedule's been released and typically, like I, we said, you, know, you guys go to the Luther open and some other opens. Are there, uh, there going to be any changing to that schedule this, this coming season? Well, we have some options and we have an open date. So, you know, we have a little bit different format at the beginning you know that Ohio State football game weekend I believe it's November 4th uh, we will have wrestle-offs that's the first time that we'll have wrestle-offs in uh, you know three four five years I don't recall when the last time we had them uh, that's something that I think our fans are going to get excited about no we're not moving it to the floor of Carver Hawkeye Arena yes it will be in the wrestling room um, and it'll be a three-day probably format like it has been in the past we have the depth Again, where we can run that, some of those weight classes will start on Thursday, and then uh, most everybody will go Friday, and then Saturday will be the, quote, final. And then the next weekend, you know, we'll look at what's best for us. All right, Tom, um, a couple uh, questions for you here as far as the whole team goes. You know, we've got a, there's a few few injuries that uh, are out there, and uh, wanted to get your perspective on just kind of how th those are going. How's Spencer Lee doing? And uh, have you guys talked about, you know, red shirt? Is that still on the table to maybe get him in the lineup at some point? You know, everything's day to day. It always is. You know what my answer is going to be here. We're going to do the best thing for the individual first and then figure it out from there. I know that we have a, a super fella there. I mean, um, mentally, spiritually, physically, um, you know, that class coming in, is they're all in the same wavelength as well that's a, always a positive and you got some really good guys there with warner and wilson and miles miles wilson and um uh, max Mirren, costello so you know we like we like the entire group we are excited about their future it's day to day and they're going to have some pitfalls make mistakes uh, but right now they look like they enjoy uh, being robots <laughs> oh. Sam Stoll joins us. Sam, talk to us about the summer months and the rehab off of injury. Uh, these summer months have been good. Um, I feel like I've done a lot of things right and, you know, set myself up pretty good to have a, have a healthy year and following years to come. So I'm excited for this year. You know, Sam, uh, comparing, you know, could you compare, I guess, your health, say, think about where you're at a year ago. How can you compare the two? Are you do you feel like you're healthier now? Or are you worse than you were a year ago? I, no, I mean worse now. I mean I feel I feel really good where I'm at now. Um, I think last year I felt all right, but uh, I think I've done some things this uh, this off season to put me in a spot where you know I feel like my shapes shapes a lot better right now than I was at this time of the year last year, and you know I feel stronger. I feel I feel good. I feel good where I'm at. Brandon, as you, you know, obviously you're talking about the world championships here, and, and you see Thomas Gilman come back after suffering what he had, what he went through and coming back, making the world team, going to the world championships, get a silver medal. Uh, I guess what does that do for you here this offseason as you prepare to go back and try to get your goal? Um, you know, with Thomas Gilman, I saw a guy pushing towards his goals. Um, when he came back, he was serious about chasing that world medal and you know he, he put in the work it wasn't just magic so um you know that that's what it's it's going to be it's going to be work to get where you want to be and that's what you got to do all right when we come back we'll hear from ISU's assistant Mike Zadick and the Cyclones after this short time out you're watching Takedown thanks to Mikey Rusty. The war raged 
for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. All right, welcome back to part two of our Cyhawk special here in the state of Iowa. Before break, we heard from Tom Brands, Brandon Swordson, and Sam Stoll. Now for the Cyclones, Kanan Store, Dane Pistano, and assistant coach Mike Zadig. From the Iowa State Cyclones, Kanan Store. The open mat named you the top redshirt freshman of 2017. You know, how are you handling the handling the attention that you've been getting from Iowa State fans? Uh, I kind of just try and brush it off, you know, not think about it too much because, you know, I, yes, I had a successful red shirt season, but I still have a lot to prove. Um, I haven't done anything yet. You know, I haven't won a big tournament or, you know, beat the top guys yet, but I use it as motivation to, to kind of push myself to work harder so I can, so I can achieve the things I want and kind of use it more as motivation rather than just look at the attention. Uh, you made the decision to stay in Ames. Uh, yep. Despite the reason you came for, didn't come for Kevin Dresser. And what did he do to convince you to stay part of this team? Uh, nothing really. It was it was more a, a personal decision. You know, I I grew a really good bond with the teammates and you know my community here, and I just really love what Iowa State's all about. I love the community. I love the fans. I love how loyal everyone here is. Um, so it was really less convincing on his part, just more, I have every reason to stay. Dane, uh, welcome to uh, welcome to the program. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Nice to yeah, no problem. Uh, so, Dane, the biggest question mark from that I've been getting from Iowa State fans is, this is your senior season, and uh, we want to know, you know, what, what, what weight are you planning on going to? Uh, I'm going to be wrestling at 184 this year. Uh, what have you... What's the, been the biggest difference that you've seen just in, in the room? What, what's been the biggest difference for you? Just their mentality, basically. Just just the way they think about the sport, the way they push us in practice. They have a clear vision on every day of what we're going to do and how we're going to get better each day. So I like that and just the way they push us to – just the mentality part, basically. Like the way they have – they make us think a different way. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying like the other coaches didn't make us like think a certain way, but this like these coaches just make us like want to push ourselves beyond like the the breaking point. You guys have goals, obviously, for your team, and you're at to this point now. I mean, we're about thirty what thirty days out from a full official practice. Yeah. Ish. I it's mean, yep. How? What needs to happen? I think. What do you think needs to happen from now until that first day of practice for these athletes to be ready to, to live up to what you guys are expecting them in the, the actual college season? Between now and then, we're building a foundation right now that it takes time to get a good solid one, and it's in the process right now. And what I mean by foundation is you know your conditioning, your strength, your diet, your weight management, and with all that said, it's it's their mindset, and that means. Um, building off of 
what they have or maybe even misdirecting some of their thought process was before. I know, as an example, a lot of the fans have been really upset with the program in the past not being able to finish. We first and foremost have to be able to hold up. And then not only do we have to hold up, but we have to hold up under a high duress, high pressure situation. So it's not just holding up now to making it through, but then making it through at a standard that we kind of possess as a coaching staff and a style that's going to be entertaining for the fans. And then on top of that, to us, breed success. So it's a balance of all that I said, and it's something that we're gearing towards eternity, not October 10th, but it's the wheels are in motion and we're going. And it, it could grab earlier, it could grab later. We want it earlier, but it also is uh, it's, it's part of individuals believing and buying into it also. All right, special thanks to Track Wrestling, USA Wrestling, and all of our guests on the show today. You can find the entire two-hour Cyhawk special along with our wrestling news interviews. It's all free anytime at TakedownWrestle.com. From the Takedown Studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.